Okay, so shall I move on? So Yahusha, or as many know him, Jesus, our Sabbath rest. I mean, a lot of people uh, don't understand the difference between um, what the Sabbath really means and how we are to do it. Most people will ask the question, how do we keep Shabbat? How do we keep the Sabbath? This question should never be, how do we keep the Sabbath? It always should be, why should we keep the Sabbath? When should we keep it? How should we keep it? Hallelujah. There are many opinions. If we got 20 people, 20 different teachers, 20 different believers in this room from different walks, we would all get 20 different opinions on what they think the Sabbath is and how they think that we should keep the Sabbath. Some say you don't, you can't, not allowed to cook on the Sabbath. Um, some people say you can't smoke on the Sabbath. That's why the Jews don't smoke all day Saturday. Um, but as soon as they see the first star, then they light it up again. It's, it's true. So, And the Jews will also teach you that you can't mow the lawns on the Sabbath, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with hiring uh, Jim's mum to come in and do it. If he's a pagan and a Gentile, it's okay. I mean, so there are many, many opinions. But what I look at is, who is our Sabbath rest? I mean, and how do we enter into that Sabbath rest? Because we need to take this burden off ourselves of, we have to get things done for Shabbat. We have to do this for Shabbat. And we wake up on Shabbat morning, whatever that day may be, and there's big arguments because something wasn't done right or something was done that shouldn't have been done. And before you know it, the day's just gone right out the window because of our own opinions. Amen? Stay in bed all day, that's the way. Don't get out of bed, don't talk to anybody the whole day, and you might might be a, a good thing if you're one of those people that likes to go around and um, check out and take take notes. So the writer of Hebrews, everyone know the book of Hebrews? Describe the moment a person exchanges confidence in his own works for faith, trust in Yahushua HaMashiach as entering into Yahuwah's rest. He urged, therefore, since a promise remains of entering his rest, let us fear lest any of you seem to have come short of it. Hebrews 4.1 I want us to think about this today. His rest. Right? Not your rest. His rest. The scriptures time and time and time again say to remember the Shabbat because in six days you have created the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he ceased or rested from his work. Amen? So we go back to Genesis. We look at when did Adam and Eve keep the Sabbath? How many times did they keep? How did Abraham keep the Sabbath? Did he keep the Sabbath? The scriptures talk about we are the seed of Abraham. We are the descendants of Abraham, but what Sabbath did Abraham keep? What feast days did Abraham keep? Most of the feast days didn't even exist when Abraham was walking the earth. I mean, so these questions I have to ask myself. And over the years, I have gone from the realms of Christianity into the realms of messianism and realized it was so messed up and messy that it just it was all over the place to the point of where I am today. I mean, because I was putting my trust in my works and not the trust in my Savior who died and kept the perfect work for me. I mean... Entering into Yahuwah's rest equates to believing the gospel of grace, which is something that we don't often hear preached today. This is made clear in two verses which follow in that same chapter. Hebrews chapter 4, 2 and 3. For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith or trust in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest. So here we have Paul, who I believe was the one that wrote Hebrews. Others might disagree. That's not really an issue. It, we, no one knows for sure who wrote the book of Hebrews. It's my opinion that it was Paul. And he's talking about those that heard the gospel have believed and they enter into that rest. What rest are we talking about? We're talking about his rest as in verse 1. And I believe the issue is, is that when we come out of Christianity, when we come out of the church, we try to do things that we think is going to give us brownie points 
with Yahuwah. Nothing's going to give us brownie points with Yahuwah. What do you mean by brownie points? Um, brownie points like, so because you're doing things, um, don't worry about everything else you're doing. As long as you're doing this, 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 and this, it'll make you perfect. The reality is nothing can make us perfect. Nothing we do, nothing we say. You can beat yourself up with a cat of nine tails because you've sinned. There'll be nothing left of you if you keep doing that because we're going to sin until the day we die. And you know that's why the scriptures say, blessed in the sight of Yahuwah is the death of the saints. Mm -hmm. And I always wonder, what does that mean? Uh, oh, they're going to be up in heaven floating around. No, they're not. What it means is, when they die, they stop sinning. They can't break the commandments. They can't go against Yahuwah. They can't go against their brother. They can't murder. They can't steal. They can't do anything anymore. So they become perf perfect. So Yahuwah's like, well, hallelujah, he's finally dead. So let us not think about death as something that, oh, uh, you know, I don't want to die. Well, really, reality is, is that when you die, you are at, at peace. And when they say rest in peace, that's exactly what you're doing. Someone's turning into a werewolf out there. All right. Is that a show for a... Oh, there's two. Okay, poor dog. All right. So the word rest used here does not mean refreshment from weariness but ceasing to work because the job is done as when you have rested at the completion of his creation works it is only when a work is completed that this kind of rest can be enjoyed so let's go back to genesis chapter 2 he looked back he saw that everything that he had created was very good i mean so at that point in time and we learned a couple of weeks ago at this time, Satan and, and there was no Satan and no demons or anything like that because everything that he created, everything was good, very good. He was good at that time. Everything was perfect. Adam and Eve had a body that was like Yahushua's body, without sin, had no clothes, but the light of Yahuwah shone upon them. Until they sinned, what what law did they break when they sinned? They just ate an apple off an apple tree. But it wasn't an apple. It was a, it, it's, not, it's a symbolic. It's symbolic of disobedience. They didn't want to listen and obey Yahuwah. He said, all these trees and plants and flowers and everything you see, as far as I can see, you can eat it with food. There's oranges, apples, there's bananas, everything, coconuts, whatever it was. But that one tree you're not going to eat. So what do they do? They go and eat that one tree. Like somebody asked me the other day, do I still, you know, um, with all my understanding now, do I, do I eat pig? And I'm like, why would I want to eat pig when I can eat lamb? Exactly. Right? Why would, I, why would I want to eat pig if I can eat beef? Right? Oh, I'd rather have a beef steak on my plate, nicely barbecued, than a pork chop. And it's not, not only because the scriptures say it's an abomination, that's not the issue. The issue is that I don't like the taste, but also when you look at the history and the study of pig, it's not a very clean animal. Just like, and then I said, my answer to people when they ask me that, I say, um, I don't like to eat bat either, I don't like to eat rat, and I don't like to eat mice, because I'd rather eat lamb. And they don't quite know how to take that, but that's the reality. We don't have to be all... <laughs> You know, hot under the collar and, oh, the scriptures say this. Look, just be be real with people. When people ask you, why don't you eat pig? Ask them, why don't you eat rat? <laughs> oh, right? And they'll be like, well, I don't eat rat because it's disgusting and yuck. Well, that's why I don't eat pig either. I mean, and I don't eat dog and I don't eat cat. Some countries do. Hallelujah. So we can see that the word rest has nothing to do with being refreshed on a weekly basis because if that's the case for the last 23 years of my ministry or whatever it's been, I have not been able to rest once on a Shabbat. I'm teaching, I'm entertaining, I'm helping, I'm cleaning, I'm, I'm, I'm counseling, whatever it is. I have no rest. Physically, that is. So something was missing in my life and I realized 
every week that I was keeping Shabbat and making sure everything was done and nothing was to be done. And I'd growl the kids. They couldn't watch TV. They couldn't play on the games and um, whatever the rules and regulations were. And none of them were in the scriptures, but let alone what we made up. Because we thought we were doing an honor to Yahuwah. But the reality is, is that the rest that he's referring to is not referring to a day per week that we, we rest and relax and enjoy because the reality is, I'm looking at some people here right now and it doesn't look like they've had, they, they get it well. Some of them look like they are having a good rest. <laughs> when Yahushua died upon the cross, the work of redemption was perfected. Nothing more is required of us, as Yahushua said, it is finished. And I want you to think about those words. It is finished. When something is finished, that is it. When somebody says to you, I finished him off, n normally it means you killed him. Or maybe, maybe you finished his haircut. But the reality is, it is finished. What does it is finished mean? Why did Yahushua say it is finished when he was up on that cross? Why? Why didn't he say, oh, it's just started? Let the party, the party's just started. Why did he say it is finished? What did he, okay, sin can't be finished because I'm still sinning, right? Crime and all those things have not finished because right now we're in a world that's polluted with sin, with all sorts of rubbish, and we're all prone to that sin. Every one of us in this room can sin no matter how holy you are and how much Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit you have, we are going to sin. We just need to realize that there's nothing that you and I can do about it. It's not our fault that we're in that situation, but the, th the great thing is we have a hope. And that hope has already come and taken care of it and paved the way. So our hope is only in him. Our righteousness is only in him. Yahuwah is totally satisfied, satisfied in the redeeming sacrifice of his son and those who believe in him enter into Yahuwah's rest and cease from all striving. Hebrews 14, for he who has entered whose rest? His rest has himself also ceased from his works as Yahuwah did from his Hebrews 14. How can we cease from work? I go to work on Monday, Tuesday, or Friday. Shabbat comes, which we, we keep it on Saturday. And then Sunday we get up and we do work around the yard or whatever we do. Back to work Monday. But hang on a minute. It doesn't it say there that he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works? As Yahushua or has Yahuwah has ceased from his? Hang on a minute, I find a problem with that because I'm still working Monday to Friday. And it's revolving, and it goes on and on and on until I'm 65, and probably by the time I get to 65, I'll probably be dead by the time I get retirement now. So I want you to have a look at the word that is finished, um, and we'll have a look at that briefly soon for a more in-depth understanding of that word in the Greek. Let's have a look at Mashiach, our Sabbath. Some teach that believers in Yahushua HaMashiach are obligated to keep the seventh day of the week as a Sabbath rest. The issue that I'm having with that one is that none of us really know right now which is the correct Sabbath day anyway. The, the Christians say it's Sunday, the Seventh day Adventists say it's Saturday, the um, what are those people call it, Muslims say it's Friday, some say it's Thursday, some say it's Tuesday, depending on where, where the moon is or whatever. On one occasion, when they challenged him, asking why he violated the Sabbath by working in it, he shocked them even more by stating that not only was he working, but his father worked too. John 5.17, But Yahushua answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. And the Jews didn't like that, because they were saying, Why are you working on Shabbat? And Yahushua said, Well, let me tell you something. The father's been working until now, and even now it's a Sabbath day, He's still working and I'm working. Well, that's, that's not what they wanted him, him to say. Oh, I'm so sorry I break the Sabbath. No, he said, I am working. I'm still working. And he's still working until 
that time when he says it is finished. Amen? The same word, he ceased from all his creation, saw that it was very good. Hallelujah. The Father was working through the Son for the purpose of bringing the new creation. I'm a new creation, and I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away, and I'm born again more than a conqueror. That is what I am. I've still got issues in my life um, that I was battling t 10 years ago. So that song really doesn't mean anything anymore. No, it does mean it. In, in, in the spiritual, in the understanding of what Yahushua has done for me, I can sing that song. Yahuwah no longer rejoices in that for which he originally instituted the Sabbath. Let's go back to creation. Why did he bring the Sabbath in? What's the Sabbath for? When he, when he rested, when he ceased from his works on the seventh day, there was no body to celebrate it with, so to speak. There was no command to Adam. Okay, Adam, you've been alive for one day. Today's a Sabbath. There was no six days before Adam came to Sabbath. It, was, it had nothing to do with man. It had everything to do with Yahuwah and his creative perfection. But something interrupted that creation perfection. Something interrupted that, that, uh, that, that, that ability for Yahuwah to cease and to stop creating. And Yahushua mentions that the Father's working till now and I'm working because something interrupted the pattern that Yahuwah had perfectly set in place from the beginning. Hallelujah. This new creation of which Yahushua HaMashiach is a first fruit is faultless in Yahuwah's sight, and both Yahuwah and his new covenant people enjoy true rest in a new creation. Yahuwah refers to this rest as my rest, Hebrews 11, uh, 3.11 and chapter 4, verse 5. It is his rest, Hebrews 4.10, because not only is it the rest he gives to us, but also the rest in which he himself delights. So a new day, what is it? It's Sunday. No, it's not. But that's what we were taught years ago. The Sabbath was replaced to Saturday, uh, to Sunday by, by Christians, and we can go on with all the arguments. The reality is we have a new day, and the day has nothing to do with what you think it is. You see, most of the stuff in scriptures has got nothing to do with your understanding of it. Yahuwah said many times, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts, your thoughts, says Yahuwah. So in other words, when you think about something, when you read the scriptures and you think that's what it means, just go back to that scripture and you're probably going to be wrong. Because how you see it is not how he sees it. How you see yourself is not how he sees you. I mean, a new day, what is it? There was much debate about when the Sabbath day is. Some say it's Saturday while others follow another day based on their calculations of a calendar that they have come across. Mostly on YouTube and Google. Dangerous places to go. Google, you can Google anything. What day is the Sabbath? You get millions and millions of ideas. And then all of a sudden you like an idea. Oh, I quite like that one. Oh, Wednesday sounds good to me. I'm going to go with that. Before you know it, you've got to, you're running, running around believing and teaching doctrines that came from Google, not from the Word. I mean, most of Christianity hold that Sunday has replaced the Sabbath because Mashiach rose on the first day of the week. Isaiah 58, so 55, 8, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are my ways your ways, says Yahuwah. Beautiful thing about it is Yahushua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Hallelujah. So don't think you can jump up there and run before the throne. And do anything without Yahushua. The term Sabbath is mentioned only once in the New Testament epistles. Once. Interesting. In this sole reference, believers are warned against coming under any sense of pressure to observe a Sabbath day. Paul says in Colossians 2, 16 and 17, which Sean was mentioning before, let no, man, no one judge you in food or drink. Let's, let's deal with that one. Okay. When I was in the church, we weren't allowed to drink alcohol. It was forbidden. I mean, no alcohol. Don't want to see it. It's a, it's 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 a 
it's a sin. Then I then I see scriptures where Noah had a vineyard and then they got him drunk. And yet Noah was meant to be the priest from the Melchizedek priesthood. And then we have other kings and priests drunk. Then we have Yahusha who was called a wine bibber. And if you look at the word wine bibber, it's someone that's always drinking. <laughs> not water, not orange juice, alcohol. The stuff that makes you go get drunk. Yes, Yahusha was in the pubs. Hallelujah. Yahusha was with the alcoholics, sitting down with the alcoholics on the street. He wasn't in the churches with a robe on, breaking the Eucharist. He wasn't in a synagogue going backwards and forwards, reading in the Hebrew Torah scrolls. He was sitting down with the sinners and the publicans. He was at the Beanley bus stop with all the, whatever kids hang around there. All my boys. Or, or my homies. Right? That's who, that's who he hung out with. But do you know why he hung out with them? Because he could do something for them. And they would appreciate what he could do for them. Hallelujah. Do you know what I'm getting at? He didn't hang out with the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they were nothing but religious idiots in that case that all they could do is judge everybody else but themselves. They had righteousness by their own works. They had seat, seat long enough that people had to hold them. So food or drink. So, okay, I'm a vegan. No, I'm not, but someone's a vegetarian. So I remember years ago, one of the brothers got up and said that all vegetarians were, I didn't say, don't think he said they were going to hell, but vegetarians was against you or something. And there was a big argument abrupt, abrupt because the other guy was a vegetarian. The reality is, is that if you're a vegetarian, don't, we're not to let anybody judge us for being a vegetarian. If you're gluten-free, you shouldn't be judged for being gluten free. If you don't have sugar in your in your tea, don't be judged because you don't have sugar. I mean, hallelujah. Then you have regarding a feast day or a new month or Sabbaths. Don't let anyone judge you. So, okay, what does that mean? All right. Um, some people have the what we call the um, Enochian calendar Sabbath, which is I don't know what month, do you know what day it is this year this year, John? He gave up on all that stuff. That's good. He's been around me too long. That's a problem. And then you've got the solar lunar calendar, which was what we had a few years back. And then we've got the um, lunar. So anyway, I'm not going to go on and on. So I used to say how crazy they were for doing this and that. and I would pre But now this is where I'm at. If somebody wants to worship Yahuwah on an Enochian Sabbath calendar that they believe with all their heart Yahuwah has given them, then so let them do so. They have that freedom in Mashiach to worship him on whatever day they choose. It's not for me to judge them. Does that make sense? And I'm quite happy to go along and worship Yahuwah with them. And most importantly, if they've got a lovely lunch afterwards, it'll even make more of a difference. Right, feast days. I can remember when I first moved to Brisbane. Somebody came up, uh, rang me up, and said, "Hey, uh, brother, are you doing the um, Day of Atonement uh, on on Saturday?" And I said, "I I believe I am." And he goes, "Well, you really you can't do the Day of Atonement on the Sabbath." And I said, um, "Why is that?" Because by at that time I was very new into this faith, so I, I wasn't going to get into arguments. I said, well, I'm doing it because the scripture says that we're going to do it at this time, this date, blah, blah, blah. And per the calendar we had at the time, it, atonement fell on the Saturday. But because what the Jews do, if the day of atonement, which they say you had to fast for the whole day, it can't be on Sabbath because Sabbath is a day of rejoicing and, and feasting. So if it falls on the Sabbath, you've got to move the day of atonement to the Sunday. And I'm like, where in the word does it say we've got to move the day of atonement to Sunday because Saturday happens to be when the day of atonement. So I, I started thinking, something's not right. 
Thankfully now, I don't keep no Day of Atonements because Yahushua has become our atonement once and for all and he is our atonement 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right? Hallelujah. New months. When does your month start? As I said, go on Facebook. Just sit there for around April. Mar end of March and you'll see Happy New Year everybody. It's the Hebrew New Year. And then two days later, another one again. Happy New Year. And you've got about five or six different Happy New Years. You're like, these guys are a bunch of nutcases. They're all messed up. They don't even know what day it is half of the time. Hallelujah. Now, it sounds like I'm being judgmental, so I'll try not to. I guess the point that I'm making is that we mustn't judge them. So, oh, well, praise you, Hua. Happy New Year, sister. Two days later. Oh, well, hallelujah. Happy New Year to you, too. Just say happy new year to them all. Keep them all happy. And uh, hopefully that, that'll, that'll get you through. But look at what this says. Which are a shadow of things to come. What is a shadow? Do shadows go behind or do shadows go ahead? Behind. So what we see is only a shadow of the reality. But the substance is of Mashiach. Colossians 2, 16 to 17. So all those things before Yahushua came were all shadows of him. When he came, he was the reality. He was a fulfillment of every one of those feasts. He is a fulfillment of the Sabbath. He is a fulfillment of our righteousness. He fulfilled everything. When he says, I've not come to destroy the law, i come to fulfill the law, he said and he meant it just like that. I haven't come to institute the law. I haven't come to reinstitute the law. I haven't come to um, to start it off again. I've come to complete it, to fulfill it, and end it. Amen? Hallelujah. The context of this admonition is that through their union with Yahushua HaMashiach, in his death, burial, and resurrection, believers have been removed from the realm of the law. The Sabbath was just a shadow of the true rest which is to be found only in Yahushua HaMashiach, to forsake the substance and return to the shadow would be foolish. The old Sabbath observance signified Yahuwah's rest in Adam before the fall. But the new Sabbath observance speaks of Yahuwah's rest in the second man and the second and last Adam, Yahushua HaMashiach. The resurrection marked the end of the Old Covenant, which includes the weekly Sabbath day and the beginning of the new, which Sabbath rests continually in Yahushua HaMashiach. It is the end of sin, death, the law, and the Old Covenant. Hallelujah. I'm almost done. It is not about the death and burial of Yahushua HaMashiach only, but the resurrection as the final completion of death being conquered. We're going to die. We're going to be buried. And we're going to rise again because he did. Isn't that awesome? Even the Old Testament believers believe that. Daniel said, I'm going to sleep in the dust with my ancestors. When Yahushua came to um, Martha, I think it was Martha, and he said, where is Lazarus? And he said, um, he's dead. Yahushua said, oh, no, no, he's not dead. He's just sleeping. And she said, yeah, I know, I know, Master, that he will rise again on the last day. Even she knew that the promise was to be fulfilled. And that's when Yahushua said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. As believers in Yahushua HaMashiach, we stand on resurrection ground. We belong to, a, to the new creation and the new covenant. We have that hope to one day rise from the dead because of what Yahushua HaMashiach did. So when someone dies, don't get upset. I remember years ago when I was a, a pastor and I went to a funeral and I sang, He is Lord, He is Lord, He is risen from the dead and He is Lord. They, they got up and said, that's a terrible song. You shouldn't sing a song like that at a funeral. Hallelujah. And I said, well, one day, you and I are going to die, and just like that, but one day we're going to be resurrected because of the fact that Yahushua HaMashiach came and did what he did. We have a hope. It's not just a uh, rip and leave them in the Eagle Beach Cemetery for the next 150 years and no one ever knows about it. But one day, every grave that's marked by Yahushua's mark will rise from the dead. 
We are not compelled to keep any particular day of the week, only to understand its significance in relation to our spiritual rest. Paul the Apostle makes the following point. One person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to Yahuwah, and he who does not observe the day to Yahuwah, he does not observe it. Romans 14, 5 and 6. The rest which Yahuwah has given to us in Yahushua HaMashiach is not confined to one day a week. It is a continuous, it is a 24-7 uninterrupted blessing of peace and insurance forever. And there remains therefore a rest for the people of Yahuwah, Hebrews 4, 9. Have you entered into his rest? Amen.